Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb with REM Network. Today, we're here with Jason Bonarigo of RMS Mortgage, and we're talking about things to know when buying a condo. So buying a condo is a little bit different than buying a single family, right? That's for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I constantly hear about, so questions to ask to make sure, even before you even go on a showing, sure. right? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking one is, what's the owner occupancy rate? Why is that so important? Well, it, it, it's massive, really, because it's, it's on occupancy rate or investor concentration. What you don't want to do is all of a sudden you're buying into a 60-unit building and you realize that 50% of the other of units are, are rented out, right, or owned by one entity, or most of them are second homes for people or investment properties and they rent it out. You right. don't have true owners living next to you and upstairs from you, and that can factor into the way just the way you live, but then obviously factors into the financing. Well, and, and look, this number always changes. Generally, right now, 50% is that big number that says, hey, anything over 50% owner occupancy, you can get uh, in the property for a lower down payment. Conforming, right? conforming, conforming right. financing, kind of natural financing, yeah. if you will, Fannie Mae financing, some of the buzzwords. But yeah, that's always been the golden rule. It used to be about 60 40. We'd like to see owner occupancy ratios. Um, but Fannie Mae's all, guidelines always change and update, and there's some streamlined stuff depending on the down payment. But yes, let's just say 50% on average is a good number. And it makes sense. I mean, because if you have more owners living in the building, then they're going to take care of the building better because they, they live in the building. They, they live they, in it. They go in it every single day. Hallways are going to clean sure, things of that. Right. And you're not renting it out to maybe, you know, a, a high traffic area or right. college students and things like and that. It, not that there's anything wrong with that, but just something that you really want to be wary of when you're buying a condominium. Right. Because right? it's important to know that, yeah, I quote unquote own the house, but the bank actually owns it with me. Sure. They want to make sure that their asset is taken care of. And of that's why owner occupancy rate matters so much. But sure. the other thing to that point and, and it being taken care of is a question to ask is, hey, what is the percentage going towards reserves and how much is in the budget, right? Sure. Sure. Because that really matters if it's a conforming loan, the percentage of the monthly revenue matters on how much it goes of to course. the reserve. Yeah, right? well, you, they want to be in the black, right? Which right. is the main thing. And again, they don't want to lose money. It's they don't, they don't want to lose yeah. money, right? Well, and again, I think quickly, that's the biggest reason why a single family and a condo is much different. Right. So when we look at it from the banking side of things, we're underwriting you, Jeff Chubb, the buyer, but we're also taking a really hard look and underwriting the condominium complex. Right. Because again, we're not buying one, two, three Main Street. We're buying into 40 other units. You're buying a percentage. Percentage into... of that. And how is that managed? Who takes out the trash? Who does the snow removal? On and on. Right, so the budget, as we call it, is massive, and 10% allocation has to be per Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That has to be allocated. Essentially, their profits have to be allocated on a quarterly or a yearly basis to that. So they to have the reserve to, account to the reserve well, account because all of a sudden, what if a tree falls in and cracks the the roof, the roof wide open, and they need to fix that? The old crap account, cash in. right? The old crap the account. Old crap that, account. Oh my Great gosh, we need, need to replace the roof. Exactly. We need to do X, Y, Z, and repairs so that aren't expected. It happens, right? Yep. So, and then that's why the reserve account is so important. So, okay, so investor concentration. This is one that's always made a lot of sense to right. me. Is that if you're buying a condo, it matters if one investor owns multiple units, certain percentage of the building. One right? entity, as Fannie right. Mae calls it, right? Because if that investor goes belly up and stops paying the condo fee, well, that means that... Or, or has crappy tenants right. or reduces the rent roll, right? right. Or the, many, he has too much power, right? Right. It's one of the guys who has too much power on the board, you know, the board exactly. of trustees, So, which which is true. And maybe he is on the, uh, the board. So there's just, there's just too much influence there. So again, the lenders don't like that. There's too much risk involved. Fannie right. Mae, Freddie Mac don't love that. So that's one of the things, again, that we look at for you uh, in, in protecting you. And again, it's some of the questions that you're not going to always remember, but you, again, you're Trusted, you ask in the beginning. Your trusted process. realtor is going to ask those right. questions, and they're obviously going to talk to the bank, and we're underwriting that for you. So, again, you can feel good when we kind of rubber stamp a condo. We're rubber stamping in the same sense that we're going into a partnership to well, buy this. Well, and to that point, if it's if it's a conforming loan at Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, you actually have to get the condo association approved it's by. Oh, yeah. We have to rubber stamp it. Right. I mean, exactly. essentially, it has to so be Fannie Mae. They actually compliant. have to rubber stamp it first, and then you get Exactly. And then we can say, hey, then we can lend, we call it lending in there, lending right. in that project. And once it's certified, it's usually good for about two years. But again, that's something that we're very, very familiar with. And, and myself working in Boston a ton, I've been doing condos for 20 well, years. So that's it's vital, and you need to kind of understand. And for my end, and that's one of the things because RMS Mortgage they have a direct window to FHA, we correct? Do. And we so, do. And so it actually speeds up that that approval timeline yeah. because we can plug them right in. We're right, what exactly. you call delegated, yeah. we can essentially underwrite for them because we've done enough of them that have performed uh, in a good fashion. So we have a kind of direct link to them. That's huge. That um, is good. So, yeah. so you know, 
Restrictions on condo docs. I remember actually we had a deal and then they dug into the condo docs and there was a first right of refusal, which FHA felt was discriminatory. Yeah. And so therefore they don't like our, that. Our buyers mm -hmm. couldn't buy the property. So, you know, there's certain things in condo docs that an attorney is going to help you review and things of that nature. But which is something to watch out for. Right. Point. Yeah. But also if you have a dog, right, you want to know if the dog's allowed in the condo. You know, right, the size dog. of the dog, right? right? A larger exactly. dog, right? So, exactly. so those condo docs matter a They're lot. They're massive, and you, and again, you, we can't stress that enough. You want to have a, a good a real estate attorney look over those condo docs before you buy them into it. Because again, once you sign that contract, you're buying into those bylaws right. and that master deed and essentially everything that's come before that. So it's massive to see that that's going to affect you in the long term, not just right now. Right. And here's one we see a lot. Right. Well, and, you know, it, well, it really, a lot on the people that haven't been educated, you know, so a lot of times I, I've seen it on the seller side. Yeah. Uh, my clients generally, I think that we educate them well enough that they know. But on that one is, okay, you've been pre-approved. Yeah. So you have a budget. Okay. And then you're told you can go out and buy for X amount. Right. And then all of a sudden that $500 condo fee is ah. added in plus the taxes. The dreaded condo fee. Yes. So what happens? Yeah. Well, I mean, again, so that's something that, again, I'd like to think obviously a good realtor and a good lender, a good banker is talking to the client up front. Hey, are you looking for a single family? Are you looking for a condo? But to your point, sometimes they say they're looking for a single family and at the last minute they buy a condo. Yeah. But so all of a sudden now we're plugging in, let's just let's say a $580 HOA or a condo fee. Uh, and taking away a $125 insurance estimate that I had, now that's a $400 difference, and now it could affect the qualifications. Right. So it's it's just massive to know those numbers. Because if again, you were qualified at, say, $2,000 a month, yep. and no, the principal and interest brings you at $1,800, yep. and then there's a $400 additional whammy, if it you changes. will, from the condo, yep. it, it can now all of a sudden make it so that way you don't qualify, sure, right? Sure, or, or just your, your own, maybe if you're qualified, that's fine, but what if your own budget expectations have changed? Right. You have to factor that in, and sometimes like a first-time home buyer or a client just doesn't, they don't know the difference to ask that question or be aware. So again, when you're looking at a condo, some of these things are really key. There's many nuances. Process. I mean, there's many nuances that you sure. need to be. Sure. And that's, look, that's why you ultimately hire. I mean, most likely it's maybe the first or second time somebody's bought a house. That's why you hire somebody who's sold thousands of these things, right? right? And and sauce, and right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but it's true. Right. It's true. I mean, you don't know what you don't know, right? right. So, I mean, you, you just have to know. But it's some key points and, and hopefully this information helps them because these are some of the the key questions. Yeah. Right. So you're Jason Bonarigo with RMS Mortgage. How do they get a hold of you? I am. I am. 617-413-5038 or, or send a text. We'll be happy to talk to you. And I'm Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Homes team and we're brokered by eXp Realty. You can always reach us at 617-480-2600 or visit us online at www.boston2.com.